All right then guys, hello, and uh, today this is a review of a battery tester, yeah, Top Don. Remember the name Top Don? We did a battery charger or a smart charger, which I found quite impressive. It's now at my mum's, it's working monitoring her car's battery because when I go to take it for MOT next year, that'll turn on the key and we'll be away, yeah? Well, I might use it in between. Um, basically what this is, is a battery checker, like what I showed you in the video, but without a printout, okay? Tiny little thing, fits in the palm of your hand. Now it has three facilities on here. The most interesting one is AC ripple, okay? Or uh, uh, checking the ripple or the AC leakage uh, in the alternator, which is vitally important actually. And I'll explain that in a minute. But um, with this one, if you don't know how battery testers work, basically what you do is you couple them up. And this French car has some horrible connectors. Yeah, and then what we do, 12.57 at the moment, the voltage, which is half charged. Yep, so we'll go in there, battery test, regular flooded, EN, European normal, yeah. Cranking, cold cranking is 500, marked on the battery, and then we'll test it, okay? And if there's any other instructions, it will tell me. So, come on. Yeah, it works uh, voltages through um, the plates and then it checks the internal resistance. Rated at 500 uh, amp hour. So yeah, there you go, good battery. And three little um, lights across the top. Uh, it will tell you if it needed charging. If it needs charging, you have to recheck it, okay? So there we go, yeah, that's that one, all right? Um, crank test easy, all it does is check to see how much amperage the, the uh, starter motor is pulling, it will tell you if that's bad or not, okay. So what we'll do here now is just look at, this is graphing multimeter, when the vehicle was started, so it was at 12 something volts, dropped down to something like 8 volts. So we'll look at this again, start the engine, crank it over, and then it's working out what's going on, and there you go. The system, the battery voltage system dropped down to 8.84 volts, yeah, okay, which is actually pretty bad. The starter motor is not good, so you can see that drop to 8 volts. This here, okay, this is reality. When you look at the tester and it gives you a, a slightly different reading, it's because it's doing a, a mean value of the voltage that it's reading, which is fine, it's okay, yeah. So if you look here, minimum value 8 0.1 volt was the minimum value that it dropped to while it was cranking. Our top done got 8.8 .8 volts. Each time we tested it, we got a different result anyway. So the top don's got it. Yeah, he's nailed it. Yeah, basically cranking is low. We do have a problem with the starter or starter cables possibly. What I want to talk about now, this is the vital thing, which is the charging test. Now, what I have here is an oscilloscope, and I'm going to demonstrate this. Um, lab scope on this oscilloscope uh, is set to AC coupling, which what it's doing is looking for AC leakage out of the alternator and through into DC. Now, if you don't understand what AC and DC voltage is, an alternator actually generates uh, accumulating current, AC current, which is a waveform, okay? Um, DC, you have three diodes in there, and the diodes clip it so you get DC current, a direct current. If those diodes start to break up, you get leakage back through the system, which can cause faults with electronic equipment in the car, especially if they're sensitive, like uh, odometers. Um, it can throw mockers in, it can send you down a wild goose uh, trail, <laughs> wild goose chase, uh, when you're uh, doing diagnostics. So it's, it's worth looking at the alternator to see what sort of leakage there is on that, okay? The other thing is, is if you have a parasitic drain in the system and you can't find it, it could be the alternator. If the uh, diodes are breaking down and letting current come back through, what will happen is that the battery will drain through the alternator to earth because the alternator is connected to earth, yeah, <laughs> okay. So what we do is, periodically you should check it, yeah, but if you're a suspect of it, um, then what you do is, is you have to go in and have a look to see if it's got AC leakage, yeah. So that's the first thing to do, yeah. So I'll just quickly uh, start this vehicle up because you don't get any ripple effect without the alternator turning. And then we'll look at the waveform. 
okay so on my waveform what I have you can see this I'm sorry about the reflections you can see how um, that's the ripple yeah the spikes is just interference and it's a fairly fairly uniform waveform yeah plus at the bottom here I'll just reset that you have a mean uh, averages okay now I can look further into this if I want to but I'm quite happy to see that that isn't uh, um, a drastic um, waveform there isn't breaks in it anywhere so that's pretty good I'll just turn the car off right so there we go that's that's a professional test whereas this tester this top don will run through it, it will run through the charging system and it will see how much leakage is there and that's actually pretty vital. So that's a little handy test for you. This is why I'm impressed with it and I did say in the video before that when you have testers like this, the electronic and fairly cheap now because all this sort of stuff's cheap, um, you get a ballpark figure of what's going on, especially with your alternator because it is an unknown component. It can fail after 40,000 miles, after five miles, it could go on for 200,000 miles. Okay, it depends what type of life it has. Yeah, the more you pay for one, obviously, the better they are, but you don't know. You don't know what's been fitted to the vehicle before. If you have diagnostic problems, it could be because of the alternator. This is something you just rule out, yeah? Diagnostics is about a process of elimination. From a maintenance point of view, especially if you want to go through the winter with no troubles, check your alternator, charging system and your battery out as well. And this sort of thing, fairly cheap. Now this one here I've got on the bench, this is a DAF one which is very expensive. It does near enough the same thing. Well actually there's a few more facilities because you have to punch in uh, numbers for warranty. But it's a big, big piece of equipment. All main dealers have them because they need to verify the condition of things they just don't look at the voltage and say meh that's no good change it because it might not it might just need charging up and away we go so that's one thing isn't it yeah so you've got to be sure this is just peace of mind more than anything i like this feels good palm of the hand nice clips and you you get what it says on the tin that's it simple as okay if you're running a business, you want something bigger, if you're just doing DIY, something smaller, if you're just a technician that wants to make sure that you're checking things properly, then yeah, this is one way to do it. Otherwise, you break out the oscilloscope, don't you? When you break one of these out in anger, yeah, you've got to justify it, haven't you? Yeah. So there you go. That's, that's that little bit of information for you, okay? Yes, I know before you say you can check your charging system by putting a uh, a multimeter on the battery switching all your lights on and revving your engine and then seeing what voltage you've got yes no problem there but that's about as far as you can get it it won't tell you the condition of the battery it won't really go into depth with your alternator and it won't give you a, lo a load um, test on uh, your starter motor either yeah so okay electronics these days are fantastic aren't they yeah absolutely fantastic so feels good in the hand as well as it doesn't feel cheap but it is fairly cheap. There is a uh, limited code offer if you want one of these uh, down below. I don't get any commission on it, but I've got it for you guys if you want it. I simply have got one of these for myself now. And I like Top Don. There's a lot of Chinese names that you don't quite grasp, do you? But this one, good, good. BT100, yeah? So, the way things are at the moment with the supply lines, you don't know whether you're going to get stuff or not. Remember the torture review I had? Um, no UK stock, so yeah, grab it while you can, chaps, because you don't know if you're going to get it or not get it later on. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, enough of the review today. I hope you enjoyed this, and it's just a little bit of information. If you didn't know when you're professional and you don't know anything about ripple testing, learn about it, okay? Link below for the snap-on tutorial for it, which you can use on, uh, on their diagnostic equipment. Just set it up to AC coupling, get the right voltage, and then as long as you know your different waveforms, good waveform patterns and bad waveform patterns, you're laughing with an oscilloscope, aren't you? This one's just a little bit simpler. Break it out quickly because it fits in the pocket, yeah? Fits in the pocket, no problem. Rock up to the girlfriends and uh, check her alternator out. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, it's only the battery, darling, yeah? You know what I mean? It's the way it is. You've got to protect your image, isn't you? Yeah? So, anyway, guys. 
thanks for watching and i'll see you again yeah i don't know about you but i've noticed that uh chinese equipment ha is coming up very top notch i really like these clips i really like these clips these are yeah it's not the stuff we used to know 20 30 years ago made in china everything is made in china now and you'll find that there is a wash of chinese equipment now what i would advise if you are going to um, buy chinese for instance which you don't get much choice you either pay more money for a uk name like sealy tools or even snap on for instance or you start to look about the companies that have got a lot of stuff on their website and they're popular now top don i've noticed actually their quality is very good and um also they have a lot of equipment on their site but it doesn't only just go to that you have to really notice um whether they have warehouses in the uk uh, in europe or the usa which means they've shipped a lot of stuff out and then they distribute it from there well, you're not buying from china now you're buying from a distributing warehouse somewhere okay so with this one got it delivered within two days brilliant what was it a day i can't remember but it, it came with the amazon package anyway nice nice okay feels good does what it says on the tin that's what i'm looking for at the end of the day i don't want any hassles we're not going to go into anything too in depth because i'm not a professor of uh, electronics all right i know some people are really really uptight about um electrics and uh, accuracy of voltages and things like that i want something i want something that i can clip on and then check and get some results or at least a reading straight away um the oscilloscope is a different matter sometimes when you have to go in depth into diagnostics um then you'll you'll need something like that but this is a per first per port of call for anybody really the charging systems are all the same they're all the same you get what you pay for at the end of the day and this is just a simple system if you want a better readout and you want it printed out you pay more money don't you but this is uh, bottom dollar bottom dollar which is not bad it's not bad at all for what it is it's good yeah um accuracy i can't really vouch for that it does look about the same well this is a mean average of what my oscilloscope is reading however i took readings from the battery on the oscilloscope which i got a much uh, smoother ripple uh, as opposed to uh, down on the alternator live which was very aggressive with lots of spikes on it and i thought right okay if i put this on on to the alternator that would probably actually uh, not read right well whereas it's on the battery it's had time to smooth out along the cables towards the battery you'll still see a leakage on there you'll still see a leakage on the battery at the battery if it's got to the battery it's got to all the other electrics in the vehicle hasn't it yeah so other than checking for uh, voltage drops on your cables and making sure that the connectors on your alternator are okay, because that can be a problem if you have a dirty connector. Uh, voltage regular, regulator can go right up and uh, burn itself out if it thinks that it's not getting enough juice to the battery. But we'll talk about that sometime. I'm sure you're interested in that, aren't you? But yeah, it is what it is. This is going in the glove box of my car. Fits in there quite nicely. And it will be used, I'll tell you, because... You need to know. You need to know whether it's the battery or whether it's a charging system. If you're not sure of either and you've only got a multimeter, you check your cable voltage drops, don't you? And then see the output of the alternator. If you've got a parasitic drain, then boom, check for your ripple. And this is what I like about it. And I've already said it, so I need to say no more, do I? All right.